Okay, we are back in the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Uh, we were in a bit of a flashback at the moment. This is uh, our current character um, as a child. Um, and we're having a bit of backstory, so I think I'm just going to dive straight into it. Let's have a quick check. We've got our mother and father here. Father looks like he's ill or injured. I, th I can't remember what the story was now. He was uh, ill, I think. Uh, mother's obviously very upset. Let's go and um, see our father. Daddy is sleeping. Oh, we got, oh, I forgot we had such a cute little girl's voice. Um, he's sleeping. Do we, we want to speak to him? Maybe we can wake Daddy, him up. Daddy, wake up! Oh, dear. I don't think he's going to wake Daddy, up. Daddy, wake up! Oh, he's not going to wake up. Oh, this is going to be sad. Mummy is crying. Oh. Mummy? Mummy? Oh, dear. Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Clearly very distraught. Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. Ah, it's awful. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways. But he loves us all. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not convinced. Come along now. So, yeah, in the last episode, we met this priest who was... as a very strange introduction. Hello. She scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. Mm. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring. And don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Yeah, we did see this earlier. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. So, yeah, so our first encounter with this reverend here was very strange. He was just, he was sick, and then he asked us to... and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just give you a quick catch-up before we carry on with the dialogue. Um, yeah, so he, he was, he vomited in front of us, and then collapsed on the ground, and told us that we needed to, to bloodlet him. So to cut him open, let him bleed, and that would fix him. Um, we were a little bit unsure about it, but we did it. We cut him and he bled and then he seemed to feel better. And then he's he's been talking to us and he's now taking us to go and see Leonard Shoulder, who's the guy who's invited us to uh, the town of Bewley, um, who never showed up for our arranged meeting. So um, it's all very mysterious at the moment. So let's uh, carry on and see what's going on. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. So he's very happy now, despite nearly well, collapsing and have been cut open with a, a bit of broken glass. Hmm. I'm not sure about this guy. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's Cottage. Is that another fossil on his door? Well, have a look Here at that. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. 
So there's a carved stone here. Is this another fossil? We've seen a few of these about. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. No, it's not, it's just, it's... I think it depicts a crescent moon. Okay, so it is just Father, a stone. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Okay. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Um, that, I, I'm not really familiar with Shakespeare that much. I don't think it's Romeo and Juliet. Should we say Othello? Othello? Precisely, yes! That's two. Two for two. knowledge of the bard is presently flawless. I consider myself to be well read, Father Roach. I wonder if there's an it's achievement. It's delightful to meet a fellow bookworm, I must say. It might be like a steam achievement for, uh, for, for getting all the um, uh, Shakespeare references correct. So there's the, we had one last episode we got right, and that one we got right as well. It's quite exciting. Uh, okay, so what we've got, there's a window, window, there's some hens, roosters. So let's have a look around. No sign of life? None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. Well, let's just try and... I'm rather fond of this colour. Just try knocking Perhaps on the door. Mr. Shoulder and I share similar taste. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. What have we got in our inventory here? Um... Nothing that'll make a noise. Well, let's just uh, let's have a look at these hens. A fearsome-looking beast. A sweet little hen, plump and well-groomed. Mr. Shoulder has stacked blocks of wood neatly beneath this small lean-to. Very neat and tidy. Let's have a little wander over this way. See what we've we got. Those trousers. A pair of thick woolen trousers. Oh, it's a glove. That glove looks familiar. Uh, I've got one in my inventory. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plough and furrow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we found it in the alleyway, where weird things were happening. A woolen undergarment. Mm, nice. Um, okay, well, we won't try and take anything at the moment. We could just try knocking on the door again. Have we got anything further? No. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. Uh, okay, let's try the window. No sign of any movement. Try the door one more time. They did say to try it again. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? Mm, doesn't seem like he's in. It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. Uh, I mean, I've got the key. This is the key to my room. I wouldn't imagine that would work. We could try it though. These sort of games, sometimes you use to try everything on everything. Um, this must provide a charming view across the moor. Okay. It seems unlikely, but let's try the key. This key doesn't fit here. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, we've got matches. Not going to burn the place down. Got the glove with the trowel. Let's, um,. Yeah, I won't do anything just yet. Oh, I've just noticed a to-do. Oh, nice. Uh, it's got a little uh, recap here. So if things that we do need to do. Um, not all kind of games like this have these sort of things. So find Mr. Shoulder. So Mr. Shoulder did not show up. I need to find him today to discuss the excavation. Explore, uh, explore Bewley. I should take a look around the area and see what I can find out about Mr. Shoulder and Hobbs Barrow. And investigate the cottage. Is he home? So, okay, that's good. That's a nice little reminder because sometimes it can be a day or two in between play sessions and you might forget what it is you're, you're trying to do. Um, so there's an exit back that way. That's just a... Father Roach still looks rather pallid. Speak to him again. Find out a little bit more about some stuff. Yeah, why not? What else do you know about Mr. Shoulder? A reclusive man. I must say I know very little about him. Does he attend services at St. Edmunds? Not regularly. If at all these days. Perhaps he feels closer to God out here on the moors. 
What do you make of Mr. Shoulder's residence? A sturdy construction, I'm in no doubt. The winds blow a gale out here, not to mention the pelting rain. At least he must have plenty of eggs to eat. Awful creatures, those hens. I mean, I mean, the, the Reverend here, he seems friendly, and he seems to be, um, you know, he's holding a conversation well, and he's giving us normal answers, he's not being suspicious at all, but it's just the way he was introduced to us. Uh, there's definitely something off about him. Do you know that young girl we saw? No, but I've seen her sneaking around the churchyard. The poor thing is feral. She takes off at the slightest stirring. We will bring the Lord to her. Good time. Perhaps she has her own beliefs. You said there were others like her. Primitive folk, yes. Avoid the moors in hours of darkness and don't wander too far. I wouldn't entrust a young woman in their company. Hmm. Mm. Do you know anything else about the Devil's Toe? Not really. I do recall it toppling over when I was a child. A few lads from Bewley rebuilt it to the best of their memories. The Devil mustn't have been happy. Come now, my child. Do not joke about such matters. Why don't you like hens, father? I know I must love all of God's creatures, but they make such an unholy ruckus, <laughs> and their talons claw at my boots. But they mean no harm, and they provide eggs. I cannot abide hens' eggs. They smell of sulfur when rotten. Hmm. It's a little bit uh, superstitious, but I suppose you probably would be in that kind of profession. What more can you tell me of these primitive folk? Godless people, Miss Bateman. Don't concern yourself with them. They live out there on the very edges of this land. If you don't wander too far, you shouldn't cross their path. Well, I'll bound to come into contact with them at some point. You mentioned that Mrs. Duplancy is worried about something at the moment. It is not my place to say. Mrs. Duplancy will tell you in good time, if she deems it fit to do so. What is your favourite of Shakespeare's works? A very difficult question, Miss Bateman. But one I can answer, nonetheless. I am awfully fond of Cymbeline. An unusual choice. All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Wouldn't you agree? A fine quote. I must admit, I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Is there a Mrs. Shoulder? No. I believe Mr. Shoulder has led a life of celibacy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Um, well, what have we got? We have this silver necklace. We could actually just try giving this to him. I found this necklace inside the church. Do you know who it belongs to? Many in our congregation wear such things. I'll announce it at the next service. Do you mind if I keep hold of it until then? Not at all. Okay. So we've got the trowel, we've got the glove. Do you recognize this glove? Fine stitching. Fine stitching indeed. An item of some considerable taste. Indeed. But I'm afraid I don't recognize it. Why do you ask? Never mind. Hmm. So we've got a box of matches, the key to our room back at the inn, and a trowel, which I don't see any use for at the moment. And um, there's no other thing to check on so I'm definitely missing something here let's have a little look let's see if I can get this other glove that glove looks familiar okay she's not gonna I wonder if it matches the it, glove though. I found behind the plow and furrow I mean, what happens if I just try the glove with the glove the gloves are a pair does this mean mr. shoulder was in the alley last night why didn't he come inside to see me oh that's a point yeah perhaps he's gone for a stroll Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to at the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? Um, oh, I don't think there's very much else to look around. Let's go back, because I want to go back to town to uh, do a little bit more investigation there. Let's go. As I say, my child, Mr. Shoulder will make himself known. Yeah. Do not lose faith. I'm rather frustrated by this situation. Now, now. Things move at a slower pace out here. Something you may not be so accustomed to. I... Come now, Miss Bateman. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. 
Yeah, I can imagine that would be quite a frustrating uh, uh, situation to be in. As we trudged silently back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. Fair enough. The train! That must be Kenneth. Kenneth? My assistant. I see. Well, Ms. Bateman, I really must attend to some other matters. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Oh, that's Romeo and Juliet. I know that one. Romeo and Juliet? Correct. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. You've proven yourself to be an impeccable yes. scholar of the bard, my child. I do it. Lord be with you. Achievement unlocked, the scholar. So we have to get three, three all three um, Shakespeare I quotes. I should go meet Kenneth at the station. I must admit, that one I knew. I mean, that's a fairly famous one for Romeo and Juliet. Um, the other two I did kind of guess at. So uh, I, I'm happy with that, though. I am happy with that. Right, so we can kind of uh, double click and skip. Uh, a lot quicker now. Oh yeah, the train station would be out this way. This is where we came into town. There we go. Oh, we've got a station master here who wasn't here when we where arrived. Where is Kenneth? He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Um, who's this? Oh, this well, is Tillett. That's one mystery solved. It's Arthur Tillett. What's he doing in there? Yeah, he disappeared. Um, from the uh, from the the inn where he was staying, he was about to talk to us, and then he disappeared, and we never saw him again. To be. Mister Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plow and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. Okay, yeah, sounds, sounds fair. Um, okay, well, let's go through these dialogue then. About last night. Um, what were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I. No, no, I, I know nought about him. Mm. No, nought about Leonard Shoulder. No, don't believe you. <sighs> no, I definitely don't believe him. I'm calling me out on it. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Mm. Look, it's possible what would though. I gain from lying to you? I just wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. I, I don't remember out. Hmm. I mean, it is a, plur pl a plausible story. It is it's, uh, also a nice cover story. If it's uh, not true, it's a good excuse either way. Hmm. Okay. Um. I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry. You'll find him. Okay. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around me skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. So, you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. 
This employment's been a savior for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. Hmm. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. Yeah, great. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow. I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. Okay. I did. I meant to look up the voice actors for this game to see whether I recognise any of them because I'm sure a couple of these voices sound very familiar, but I don't know. It might, it might just be one of those voices that you just think you, you've heard. Um, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll try and do that at some point. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, why? His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, oh, Miss Bateman. We're being impossible. <sighs> Nothing's going right. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at, sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Hmm. Let's see if we can get our stuff then. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Okay, master. I was going to say who's Mr. Price. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, I. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Oh, Mr. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Everyone says that. So they all seem sure that we're going to meet him. And some people, they lied to us earlier about knowing about Hobbs Barrow. The, uh, the innkeeper, I think, initially said he didn't know anything about Hobbs Barrow, but then admitted that he did, and that most people do. They just don't like talking about it, a bit superstitious about it. Um, so these things, we've done these things, haven't we? About last night. You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss, then nothing. But you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I a sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I. Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. Hmm. Very strange. My mind has drawn a blank. Has it now? Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Yeah, it's getting angry now. Hmm. Where can I find Mr. Okay. Price? Okay, right, um, He lives above the storeroom. Yeah, okay. We'll see. Thank you. We know that one. Okay. Farewell for now. Tara. So I think that's going to be our next lead then, uh, is to go to... Uh, go find the uh, postmaster. Oh, it's the, it's the cat. That's going to kill. Is it going to kill the crow? Ooh, that's close. Hmm. Oh, here we go. There's old oh, Cyril. Did we speak to him at the uh, the inn? Cyril is no doubt keeping watch on any potential new arrivals from the railway station. We did. Yes, he didn't like the railway station. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. Tis no place for outsiders. 
So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in. Uh, no. <laughs> His voice sounds familiar. I think I said that in the uh, last episode. But it, may, it might not be. I just I need to look it up. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? <laughs> Fair enough. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Goodbye. <laughs> Ta-ra, lass. <laughs> okay, so we do have these doors here, but I think... Uh, that everything? So there is also another exit. We haven't been down there yet. But let's, let's follow the story. And uh, we will continue on. Maybe try and find the postmaster. So we're looking for... Uh, the Royal Mail. What's this? Is it this one? A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. Oh, okay, that's the Vicarage. Okay, so no, I guess we it said North, Mitch. We don't actually have a compass, but I'm guessing this sort of direction. Uh, oh, that's Wally. Did we... This young fellow looks miserable. He was with someone last time we saw him, wasn't he? Good day. Are you sure you don't know anything about Hobbs Barrow? I would very much like to find it. No. Goodbye. Yeah, so he doesn't want to say anything. Uh, do we know... Oh, don't. Oh, okay. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Yeah, so we can't go any further that way. Um, let's try the doors. I don't think we will have to start knocking door to door. But it is say north of the, the inn, so I'm guessing maybe this is it. Nobody home. Ah, oh, okay. Let's, well, okay, we'll go back to the other ones and um, try try those. I mean, we could try the vicarage. Oh, what's up this way? Have we been this way? Oh, we haven't. That must be the postmaster's Here store. Here we go. He looks a little chirpier than your average Bewley resident. Maybe he'll be a bit more friendly then. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. Uh, yeah, we'll, go, we'll, we'll ask... We'll tell them what we're doing, and then we'll, we'll get more conversation. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbour. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Typical. Curses. <laughs> Curses. I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. Curses. Uh, there's the episode title. Uh, when will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight. Could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Okay, so who exactly is this guy? You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Um... Uh, yeah, he seems fine. Maybe, uh, maybe a little over-friendly, but maybe that's just in comparison to some of the others. Uh, yeah, we'll tell him. Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. 
Okay, fair enough. Um, so you might know people around the uh, the village. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye, funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No, not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. Settle down there. Flatter me, Mr. Long. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station which brings us lovely new faces. Faces you have hanging up on your wall by any chance? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, serial killer vibes from this guy. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. Yeah, we kind of we got that impression. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Yuli. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for an ale right now, actually. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait, do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anywhere. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. Okay, well, he seems friendly, uh, but it might be worth just uh, keeping our guard up a little bit. Uh, so we've got Daughter's House. Well, yeah, so let's have a look at the uh, stuff over here. Royal Mail, Postmaster's Residence. This must be the local post office. There we go, there's our crate. There's my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. Mm. I'm going to have to get in there. Okay, so I'm guessing he's not going to let us in, though. The postmaster isn't home. But my crate is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. Okay. So we've got no exit out that way. All right, fair enough. That is my crate. So I guess we'll just do a bit more exploring of the town. Um, we could always try... That's all boarded up, that house. See if anybody's home. I don't think anyone is home. Okay. We've got this door here. Hmm. No one here. Doesn't seem like anyone's about. I don't think anyone is home. All right, fair enough. So there were some other doors back by Cyril. I guess we could go that way. We might want to just do some more talking. We've also got up this way. What is up this way? I don't think I've been down this path, have I? Oh, yes, it, this was the woods. Uh, yeah, well, let's have a... We didn't get any further than this. This is where we encountered the Reverend. Oh. We have a hole. No doubt home to many a woodland creature. Let's have a look. I have no desire to go rooting about in there. You sure? Hmm. I bet we will at some point. Otherwise, what's the point of it being there? Oh. I shall see you later this evening, gents. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. Oh, way up. Hello, sir. A pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. 
Oh. Wait. <laughs> Some nerve. <laughs> Lady, you're blushing. I most certainly am not. <laughs> okay. So, uh, who are these guys then? The men look like they've spent many a long day exposed to the harsh moorland weather. Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Says who? Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. Who's Lord Panswick? Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Bewley? Aye, not far away. But his lordship doesn't like questions. Or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. Well, let's just uh, see if we can do a little bit more conversation first. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, aye. You're not from round here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. Yeah, we, we, we are kind of pr prying a little bit. There's no reason to tell us anything, but... What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. Fair enough. These are his woods? Aye, his lordship owns most of the land round Bioli. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? In a bit. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> if you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We need the timber for the restoration work. Okay. How intriguing. Yeah, sounds interesting. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Okay, fair enough. Do any of these other people I'll say let him anything? Get on with his yeah, work. okay. All right then, we'll go back. Um, we definitely don't want to just yeah just try digging uh, in the hole. I can't see how that will help me. Well, you never know unless you try, do you? Um, okay. So that is the only other way, isn't it? Okay, let's go back. There's definitely nothing else here. So, what was this way? Ah, back that way. Okay, so what about this way? Just trying to explore a little bit, just to kind of see where we end up. Okay, back at the church. Um, okay, we'll have a quick little conversation with a couple of people, and then we'll probably have to call it... A no, I didn't want you to go that way. Go back. Talk to... Uh Hello. Good day. We have some more... Oh, yeah, we've got some more um, conversation op uh, options. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs what? Never mind. Okay, so she doesn't know. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. But for whom and to what god, I ask? Is he a man of faith? <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our god-given ruler. Stay away from him, pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. I certainly don't intend to. Oh. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. De Plancy. Yeah, let's not betray the trust just yet. Why did you call Lord Panswick wretched? He hides in that manner of his and cares not for his people. I've heard stories whispered in the pews, you know. What kind of stories? That he shoots people on sight. Oh. Anyone that strays onto Panswick Manor. Good grief. Yet he will walk into the plough and furrow and bar ale for all and be hailed as our protector. <laughs> 
I answer to God and God alone. Forgive me, pet. I shouldn't get so worked up. Not at all. I appreciate your honesty, Mrs. De Plancy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Okay, so we are definitely learning a little bit more. So, uh, oh yeah, we have our map. So to do... Yeah, so explore Beaulieu, locate Hobbs Barrow, find a way into the Postmaster's storeroom. My crate is inside, how can I get in there without attracting too much attention? Oh yeah, we need to open a tab as I plow and furrow. Um, okay, okay, okay. How are we doing for time? I think we do need to kind of wrap up this episode. I will just have a little quick chat to the blacksmith here, see if he has any extra information. Good day. Yes. Uh, is that where I asked him this? I noticed your spectacular fossil specimen. Oh, I, I collect them. This one is called an... Ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. From the Jurassic period, I'd venture. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively modern history. Oh, I. Well, I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. <laughs> okay. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? His lordship commands much respect around here, lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Are you sure okay. you don't know You're where Hobbs Barrow one. is? Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Okay, so we learned that he likes fossils and he collects them. But we did know that there was a fossil um, on a rock somewhere out near town. So whether we need to get that at some point to give to him, maybe giving him a fossil could be something, I don't know. I'll just check these uh, kids here. Good day. Hello, miss. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. Have you ever been there? Evans, no. Villages aren't allowed there. Why not? Don't know. It's just the way it is. Mm. Are you sure? Okay. I really am sure. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Yeah, we know that one. Okay. Um, let's see. Hello. Have anything else to say? Yes. Are you sure? Okay, no, Not no. like a wheelbarrow. Never mind. <laughs> what do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweets once. My friend says that Lord Panswick has special trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. Do you think that's true, miss? I think that's very unlikely. Me too. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Right, okay, so what we'll do then, um, in the next episode, we'll go back into the Plow and Furrow, try and open up a tab, and there might be a couple of other uh, villagers about that we can kind of speak to and um, see if we can get some more information about the people in town, and uh, yeah, we'll try and advance the story. So, um, yeah, nothing super sinister is happening yet. We are just kind of doing a an information gathering session, so... Um, Hopefully you're enjoying this. I'm really enjoying it. I absolutely love these kind of games and I think we're going to be getting into some very interesting things coming up later on. So I'm quite excited for that. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.